Celtic Twilight by William Butler Yeats, The Untiring Ones. It is one of the great troubles of life that we cannot have any unmixed emotions. There is always something in our enemy that we like, and something in our sweetheart that we dislike. It is this entanglement of moods which makes us old and puckers our brows and deepens the furrows about our eyes. If we could love and hate with as good a heart as the fairies do, we might grow to be long-lived like them. But until that day, their untiring joys and sorrows must ever be one half of their fascination. Love with them never grows weary, nor can the circles of the stars tire out their dancing feet. The Donegal peasants remember this when they bend over the spade or sit full of the heaviness of the fields beside the griddle at nightfall, and they tell stories about it that may not be forgotten. A short while ago, they say, two fairies, little creatures, one like a young man, one like a young woman, came to a farmer's house and spent the night sweeping the hearth and setting all tidy, and the next night they came again, and while the farmer was away they brought all the furniture upstairs into one room, and having arranged it around the walls for greater grandeur, it seems, they began to dance. They danced on and on, and days and days went by, and all the countryside came to look at them, but still their feet never tired. The farmer didn't dare to live at home all the time, and after three months he made up his mind to stand it no more, and went and told them that the priest was coming. Well, the little creatures, when they heard this, went back to their own country, and there their joy shall last as long as the points of the rushes are brown, the people say, and that is until God shall burn up the world with a kiss. But it is not merely fairies who know untiring days, for there have been men and women who, falling under their enchantment, have attained perhaps by the right of their God-given spirits an even more than fairy abundance of life and feeling. It seems that when mortals have gone amid those poor happy leaves of the imperishable rose of beauty, blown hither and thither by the winds that awaken the stars and the dim kingdom has acknowledged their birthright, perhaps a little sadly, and given them of its best such a mortal was born long ago at a village in the south of Ireland. She lay asleep in a cradle, and her mother sat by, rocking her, when a woman of the she or the fairies came in, and said that the child had been chosen to be the bride of the prince of the dim kingdom, and that it would never do for his wife to grow old and die while he was still the first ardour of his love, and she would be gifted with fairy life. The mother was to take the glowing log out of the fire and bury it in the garden, and her child would live as long as it remained unconsumed. The mother buried the log, and the child grew up, became a beauty, and married the prince of the fairies, who came to her at nightfall. After seven hundred years the prince died, and another prince ruled in his stead, and married the beautiful peasant girl in his turn, and after another seven hundred years he died also, and another prince and another husband came in his stead, and so on until she had had seven husbands. At last one day the priest of the parish called upon her and told her that she was a scandal to the whole neighbourhood with her seven husbands and her long life. She was very sorry, she said, but she was not to blame, and then she told him about the log, and he went straight out, dug until he found it, and then burned it, and she, she died, and was buried like a Christian, and everybody was pleased. Such a mortal too was Clunabera, who went all over the world seeking a lake deep enough to drown her fairy life, of which she had grown weary, leaping from hill to lake and lake to hill, and setting up a cairn of stones wherever her feet lighted, until at last she found the deepest water in the world, in Little Loch Ea, on top of the Bird's Mountain at Sligo. The two little creatures may well dance on, and the woman of the log and Clunabera sleep in peace, for they have known untrammeled hate and unmixed love, and have never weary themselves with yes and no, or entangle their feet with a sorry net of maybe and perhaps. 
great winds came and took them up unto themselves. End of The Untiring Ones